When most people imagine Viking life, they picture warriors, long ships, and snow-covered coastlines battered by relentless winds. But hidden beneath that dramatic image is something far more remarkable, something that ensured survival long before. Battles or exploration ever mattered. The Vikings developed a method of heating their homes so effective that travelers entering their settlements wrote about the impossible comfort inside. Warm floors, stable temperatures, and calm air in a climate capable of freezing seawater in midair. Their longhouses were not simple shelters. They were machine structures that used architecture, physics, and the natural world to create sustainable warmth in some of the harshest environments on the planet. At first glance, a Viking longhouse looked like a humble building made from turf, stone, and timber. Yet its design was intentional and extremely advanced for its time. The elongated, low shape minimized exposure to cold winds. The thick sod walls held enormous thermal mass meaning once the interior warmed up, it stayed warm for hours even after the fire burned low. Hmm. This was more than architecture it was a slow-charging energy battery. Every part of the structure, from the floor to the rafters, played a role in trapping, storing, and releasing heat. To survive in the northern Atlantic, the Vikings didn't build houses. They engineered climate systems. At the heart of every longhouse was a feature that confused outsiders, the fire trench. While most European homes used raised hearths, the Vikings dug their fire directly into the floor. Lowering the flame changed the behavior of heat completely. Instead of rising quickly and escaping through the roof, warmth built gradually, saturating the stones and packed earth around it the fire produced a long controlled burn that heated the entire building evenly, not just the area immediately around the flames. The trench acted like a basin slowly releasing heat throughout the night and preventing sudden temperature drops. With minimal fuel, the Vikings achieved what many medieval households could not, reliable, consistent warmth. Then there was the smoke one of the most misunderstood elements of Viking heating. Today, smoke is seen as something to remove immediately. Chimneys, vents, and flues are all designed to push smoke out before it lingers. Viking homes did the opposite. Their roofs had just enough openings to prevent suffocation, but not enough to clear the upper air. As a result, a warm haze of smoke collected high above the living space, forming a natural insulation layer. This layer trapped rising heat, sealed drafts warmed the beams, and slowed the escape of warm air. It acted like an invisible blanket, keeping the interior temperature stable during brutal winters. Settlers who copied Viking homes but fully vented the smoke never achieved the same comfort because the smoke blanket was essential to the system. Another key element was something even more surprising body heat. Many longhouses were designed to house both people and animals under the same roof, separated by divisions but close enough to share warmth. Cattle, sheep, and goats radiate constant heat. And in the depths of winter, this living furnace could raise indoor temperatures significantly. Combined with the heat stored in the walls, floors, and rafters, the energy from animals and humans made the longhouse an efficient, self-sustaining environment. In a land where winter could last eight months, every calorie of heat mattered. The Vikings understood this intuitively and integrated it into their architectural strategy. The land itself was part of the system instead of building above the ground. Longhouses were often dug partially into the earth, the surrounding soil acted as natural insulation, dramatically reducing heat loss and shielding the structure from icy winds. In Iceland and Greenland, geothermal warmth under the soil added another layer of heating. 
keeping the house more stable in temperature year-round. Settlers who later built European-style cabins above ground suffered because they ignored this principle. They lost the protection of the Earth's thermal mass and struggled to keep their interiors warm. The Vikings didn't fight nature, they partnered with it. What made the system so unique was how easy it was to get wrong. Local experts gave newcomers strict warnings for good reason. If the fire trench was dug too deep, smoke wouldn't rise correctly and could settle dangerously at breathing level. If the rafters were sealed too tightly, the house trapped smoke instead of regulating it. If the walls were too thin, heat escaped faster than the trench could replenish it. Even building the longhouse to wide caused problems because the low fire couldn't tea heat a large area efficiently. Everything about the structure relied on balance. It wasn't one trick or one design choice, which was the harmony of all the parts working together. What's remarkable is that this ancient system was more sustainable than many modern heating methods. While today, we rely heavily on fuel, electricity, and advanced materials. The Vikings used almost no excess energy. Their heat came from low, slow fires. Their insulation came from earth and smoke. Their thermal mass came from sod, stone, and wood. Their supplemental heat came from the people and animals who lived inside. Every element was efficient, eco-friendly, and optimized for the environment. In many ways, Viking heating wasn't primitive. It was elegant and brilliantly engineered. Modern researchers who have reconstructed longhouses consistently report surprising results. Even in harsh winter conditions, temperatures inside remain stable. Floors stay warm long after the fire dies down. The smoke layer significantly reduces heat loss. Animals contribute real, measurable warmth, and the overall system requires far less fuel than expected. Some experimental longhouses in Iceland maintain indoor temperatures 20 to 25 degrees Celsius warmer than the outside air, with nothing more than traditional Viking methods. This level of performance shows that their architecture wasn't crudded, was scientifically optimized long before thermodynamics was understood. The deeper lesson hidden in Viking heating is simple but profound. Technology doesn't need to be modern to be advanced. The longhouse was the result of countless generations learning exactly how to survive in a hostile climate. Every feature from the trench fire to the smoke layer to the thick sod walls came from centuries of trial, error, and practical innovation. For anyone interested in off-grid living, survival architecture, or sustainable design, the Vikings offer more insight than most modern textbooks. Their homes teach us that sometimes the most effective solutions are the old ones, the ones shaped by nature, refined over centuries, and forgotten only because we believe modern means better. If we pay attention to what the Vikings built, we may rediscover a kind of efficiency that modern heating still struggles to match. And in learning from the past, we might find methods that transform the way we think about shelter, warmth, and survival in the world today.